This is Matt Morgan. I'm an application engineer at Go Engineer. My daughter's seventh grade science teacher told her students how excited she was about seeing her first 3D printer. I thought it would be fun to make a 3D print of some kind to give to her uh, because she was so excited about 3D printing. I asked my daughter, what would you want to give her? She came up with a brilliant idea that we could give her a 3D printed apple. I thought that was a great idea, so I went to work building an apple. And I thought it would be cool to create a video showing you the processes that I used to create this apple, some of the tools that SOLIDWORKS uses. Uh, you can definitely create this apple a lot of different ways. Uh, I just think this is a cool uh, example of some more organic shape and some of the tools that you might use with SOLIDWORKS to create this shape. So what I'm going to do to start with is uh, build the, a revolve that will be the overall shape. And we'll push and pull it using the SOLIDWORKS freeform uh, command from there. So I'm just going to start a sketch. And um, I'll create a box that's uh, the approximate size I want to fit this apple into. So let's say this is going to be about three inches wide and two and a half inches tall. So that'll be the approximate shape I want to fit my apple inside. Since I'm designing this with the freeform uh, command, it'll go a little bit inside outside uh, to give it some of that random shape of an apple. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a little straight line on the top and the bottom. So these can even be the same size. It's not super critical. Then we'll create a spline from there that's uh, about the shape of the apple that we want. Maybe I'll snap to some of these uh, walls here. And then, of course, I want the, the shape of this apple to be a little bit different so I can kind of push and pull these splines around, stretch them around however I feel that would work really well. You know, push and pull it however, uh, however you like. Maybe we'll dimension a few things here. We'll say maybe this is a quarter inch down. And maybe we'll make this one, I'm kind of liking quarter inch, maybe we'll make this one a little bit less deep, so we'll go 0.2. And maybe we'll make that arrow vertical, so you can pick on one of the arrows of a spline and, and make it vertical. Let's see what that looks like if we revolve it. So we'll revolve that shape around this line. Okay. It's looking pretty good for our general shape. Uh, let's give this uh, a red color at least, so it starts looking like an apple. Uh, maybe a medium gloss red plastic would look pretty good. That looks good. Okay. Now the next step is to create some regions that we can freeform to push and pull uh, the apple around to kind of give it its random uh, uh, bumps and, and things like that. Alright, so the next step is going to be to create separate regions that I want to use to create the, the different bumps. I believe there are five separate bumps on an apple. I could be wrong. Uh, you can design these however many of these little uh, segments you want, but I believe there's five petals which corresponds to each kind of bump in the apple at the base, especially, is where it's more prominent. So I'm going to create five regions. I'm going to go ahead and turn off ambient occlusion, too. That kind of gives it some, a little bit more realistic lighting, but uh, it's not necessary while I'm in the design process. So what I'm going to do is start a sketch on the top plane, and I'll just draw one line out here. I'll pattern that around five times with a sketch pattern. So I'll make that five. And then in order for the split line to work, I'm going to copy this face. Uh, because the 
top and bottom edges were the same. This circular edge is the same on the bottom side as it is on the top side. So now I'll go ahead and trim that out. And now I have five separate lines that I can go into the uh, split line command, which is on your curves menu. I can split this face. And now you can see I have five separate regions I can play with and make each one unique with the freeform command. Uh, part of the importance of this face right here is that each of these faces are now four-sided surfaces. Um, that creates an ideal surface. If this was a sharp point and this was a sharp point, uh, we would call that a degenerate surface, meaning that when we look at the, the uh, UV curves of it, uh, they all come to a single point and they only have two sides. Uh, with this, as soon as we go into our surface command and boundary surface, I mean, sorry, not boundary surface, uh, freeform, we can pick on that face and you can see the UV curves uh, go in two directions and there's an actual uh, edge at the top. Uh, that can help in making sure that the UV curves are following the right contour and also when we're stretching and pushing and pulling this around, a four-sided surface is ideal. Um, if you were getting into uh, the options here where you could take an edge and say that edge is movable or movable but it st has to stay tangent to its current position or, or movable in curvature, uh, I want to make sure this is either tangent or curvature on these edges. Um, the movable choices are only available if it is a four-sided surface. The other ones are fine even if it's more than four sides or less than four sides. So I'm going to put a curvature control on both sides so it has to match the curvature across that boundary. And then I'm going to add some curves in the up and down direction. So if it's going uh, lateral right now and I want to switch it to uh, the longitudinal, I can tab. It's kind of latitude and longitude because it's a, a spherical shape here. But um, I'm going to put a couple of curves here, three of them. And really only the middle one is going to be the one that I'm going to manipulate. I'm going to add a couple of points on that one. The other two curves are kind of like adding spline control points here and here. So as I pull this one out, it's not going to really move these ones too much. So now if I turn off add points and I start pulling these around, um, I could say let's pull this one down a little bit more and create a little bit of a bump. And you can see that it's maintaining the curvature across this boundary. As long as that going to the right edge, it looks like it is. This one's the bottom one, and that one can stay contact. So I can push and pull and add some of the, the bumps to the apple. Uh, I can give it a little bit of a, a, a peak almost out here. Maybe I'll raise the top just a little tiny bit, just to give it some uh, non-uniform shape. And technically, you could just pattern this around five times if you didn't care if they're all symmetric, but I wanted to add a little bit of uh, uh, discontinuity to it. I wanted them to be a little more random, so I'm just going to freeform design each one of these. I may fast forward here uh, just to get through all this. A couple of tips when you're manipulating these, you can control the, the triad that you see here. That can be the global triad, the global XYZ. It can be based on the surface or just on the curve. So I kind of like surface or curve so I can pull it out normal to the surface. Uh, but I can, I can pull up here, I can pull it uh, in this, in this uh, basically X direction for what it's looking at now and kind of push and pull these around and give it just a little bit of discontinuity, kind of random nature to it. I could even control select all three of these points and move them all at the same time too. So I could kind of push the whole thing out all together and then pull one at a time randomly later. So maybe this one I want to pull more straight down so I switch it to global and give it a little bit of a shape like that.
So here you have a pretty good apple. If we turn off the edges, it, you can kind of see just the random nature of it, and you could obviously push and pull and tweak and change however you like. Uh, but that's a pretty easy way to create the apple. Uh, for part two, I will show you how I created the leaf. This has been Matt Morgan with Go Engineer. Thanks for watching.